Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Ventura 13.1. This is the first major update to macOS Ventura since its initial release, and this is available for all macOS Ventura supported devices, and is available around the world at the exact same time for everyone. As you can see, this came in at 1.68 gigabytes. that's on my Mac Studio, and it's not a giant install and was installing very quickly on this device. Prior to macOS Ventura, updates seem to take a very long time. With Ventura, they've been nice and fast. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple in the upper left and then go to About This Mac. And as you can see, if we click on the macOS Ventura 13.1, it says that the build number is 22C65. This is the same build number that we had with the RC or release candidate. So if you're a beta tester or developer, this is the same version. You just had it early. If you don't want to continue on the beta program, uninstall that beta profile and then just reboot. If you want to continue when we have the next betas, leave the beta profile there. And then once we have an update, you'll see it here. Now, the first major change or update with macOS 13.1 is the new app called Freeform. This is something that we got with iOS 16.2 and also iPadOS 16.2 that launched today as well. Freeform allows for real-time collaboration across multiple devices with multiple people. You can see it says get creative, sketch out a print design, a mood board, brainstorm ideas, and so much more. Build your board, you can add media, files, links, texts, and more anywhere on the board, and also invite people to your board and develop your best ideas together in real time. So if we click continue here, we'll go ahead and sync this, and you may have to enable this in iCloud settings in order for it to sync. Within our iCloud settings, if we scroll down, you'll see Freeform. Let's go ahead and turn that on, and then we'll merge the data as we probably have to merge it across iCloud for all of the different iOS updates and more that I have. Let's go ahead and close that, and let's go into a board on my iPhone, and as you can see here, the board is empty, but we can update it in real time. So as we're using it, you can see that we're updating here in real time. If I type the word Zolotech and then draw on the screen even more, you'll see it just update back and forth in real time. So it's a great way to collaborate across different devices with different people and more. Now, if we go into settings, you may have already seen this next feature earlier. Now it's the same as iOS 16.2 and iPadOS 16.2, but within settings, if we click on our name here at the top and then go to our iCloud, within iCloud, if we scroll down, you'll see advanced data protection. This is a way we can end-to-end -end encrypt all of our data that you see here. From our device backup, messages backup, iCloud Drive, notes, photos, reminders, Safari bookmarks, Siri shortcuts, voice memos, and wallet passes. All of these can be end-to-end -end encrypted. You can enable these on your device, click turn on, it prepares it, and then says update your devices. So I have to update the other devices here in order to update it across everything. So they all must be on the latest versions, and then we'll be able to turn on end-to-end -end encryption. You'll have to set up backups and different keys as well, as Apple will no longer have the keys. So that's something, and you'll see here it says advanced data protection not available. Some people were getting this error where it says check your network connection and try again. So you may get a few errors with this. I've seen some other people complain about this. Also, if it's a brand new device, you may not be able to enable it yet. They may give you a waiting period as well so that you can't encrypt someone else's data. Let's go ahead and close that out, and the next thing has to do with messages. Within messages, you can see there's some emoji here. These are old emoji that were from this previous year. However, I would expect some new ones this coming year as Unicode updates their standards and then Apple will update their new icons to follow. However, if we search for something, this is what's updated. You'll see it says cars and Apple has improved search in messages. It allows you to find photos based on their content, such as cars that I have here, dogs, people or text. So that's something that's a little bit new and you'll see I searched cars and you'll see what shows up. Now within notes and within notes, when we have someone collaborating with us in a note, if maybe they're typing the word Apple, we'll see an actual status from that with an indicator of who's updating it in real time. So it makes it a little bit nicer with shared notes to see those live indicators. They've also added some updates in Find My. And Find My has been updated to help pinpoint the location of nearby AirTags, AirPods Pro 2nd Generation's case, 
and find my network accessories. Before, you couldn't easily make it play a sound or locate it. Now you can do that from your Mac. You'll see I need to replace the battery in my AirTag that I'm showing here, but at least it gives us the option to actually play a sound and locate that AirTag. Now this update actually fixes a few issues as well. One of those has to do with notes syncing properly. So notes sometimes could be updated and then just wouldn't sync properly across your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. That should be resolved in this update after you made some changes to it. They've also fixed an issue where you could lose your keyboard and mouse input in some games and apps. So your mouse and keyboard should now function as expected. That wasn't you or a disconnect. It was actually a bug within Mac OS that's been resolved now. Additionally, there's a bunch of security updates. And within Safari, if we go to Apple's security update website, and I'll link that in the description, if we scroll down, you can see all of the different security updates that are contained within the releases today. And Apple also released macOS Monterey 12.6.2 and macOS Big Sur 11.7.2. So if you're not on Ventura yet, you'll be able to install these updates and have a bunch of security updates to go along with them as well. But we have iOS 16.2, and here you can see Mac OS Ventura 13.1. If we go into that, you'll see there's a bunch of different updates from accounts to AMD to boot camp. As we scroll down, we have some kernel updates, photos updates, printing, Ruby, Safari, WebKit, and quite a few changes or updates for WebKit. And the way you read this is for Safari. You'll see here it says impact, that's the issue. Visiting a website that frames malicious content may lead to UI spoofing. A description or the fix or resolution for this was a spoofing issue existed in the handling of URLs. This issue was addressed with improved input validation. And then they give the CVE value or number and who submitted the information. So all of these have been updated. And of course that leads me to, should you install Mac OS 13.1 Ventura? If you haven't installed it already, I would highly recommend it if you're already on Mac OS Ventura. However, if you're on the previous versions of Mac OS Monterey or Big Sur, at least update to the latest security update so that you have all of those patches in place. It's been pretty stable for me. I've been using it with Final Cut Pro and I haven't noticed any difference as far as reliability or stability. Of course, if you have major production equipment that you need to have things done on your Mac and you're worried about it, you may want to hold off a few days to see how that goes. But if you're using standard Mac apps, Mac App Store apps, they seem to be working just fine. I use Final Cut Pro, Craft, I also use Pixelmator Pro, and all of those seem to be working just fine. So I've really had no issues with this update and it's been quite stable. If you're on a MacBook with battery life, I haven't noticed a difference there either. I've been using it on a MacBook Pro 16 inch, no issues as far as that goes. And Overall, it seems like it's a pretty decent update. As far as future updates, well, Mac OS Ventura 13.2 Beta 1 will probably roll out fairly soon. If we go into this here, we'll probably have that within the end of the week or so. Typically, Apple will have one more beta, probably Mac OS 13.2 Beta 1 by the end of this week, maybe by the 16th. Last year, they had a similar version on the 17th. Since we move a day or so every year, that will be updated probably to the 16th. And then we won't have another update until probably the second week of January due to the holidays. So that's typically what we can expect. We should have an iOS 16.3 beta one this week, although Apple could change this up as they have many times in the past. So that's everything with Mac OS Ventura 13.1. Let me know if you've installed it and how it's going for you and also what device you're using in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.